Okay, next up is uh, exploring the C value in the graph of y equals sine x plus c. So when we go back to that general form, y equals a sine bx plus c plus d, it's really important to start identifying the location of these parameters. So we're looking at the c value, so that's inside of our sine function, and it's what we're adding to our x variable. So when we consider the following functions, y equals sine x, y equals sine x plus pi over 2, and y equals sine x minus pi, we can see that we have a c value in these locations. So here our c value is equal to 0. So there isn't one. Here we can see that our c value is equal to pi over 2. And here our c value is equal to negative pi. So let's graph the the, uh, the following functions um, using a graphing calculator in radian mode with the window settings um, that are given. So I'm just going to quickly make sure I'm in radian mode, which we are. I'm going to change my window settings. So negative 2 pi, 2 pi, pi over 6, which we remember is 30 degrees in radians, and then negative 2 Point five, positive 2.5, and we're going up by 0.5. So the first function that we're getting to be pretty familiar with is sine of x. So we'll graph that, and I will plot it on the following grid. So I'm starting off with my x-intercepts. my minimums and maximums, and we can see the graph take shape. And I will label this one y equals sine x. Okay, next up. y equals sine x plus pi over 2. And now once we hit graph, we're going to be able to see what that C parameter does. So it looks like everything was shifted to the left. Or you might be able to look at it and think that everything was shifted all the way to the right. If we see this maximum moves all the way to there. But usually we're going to look at the shorter transformation or translation in this case. So it's shorter to go to the left than it was to move to the right, so we would say it's a translation to the left, or as we learned before, a horizontal shift. Remember, a phase shift? Okay, so let's try and graph this. So my max moved to here, this max moved to here, new maximum is now up here, this minimum moved here, this minimum moved here, and all these x-intercepts moved here, here, here. And that was actually a mistake, that should have been here and here. And again, we can see our graph. And I will label this one y equals sine x plus pi over 2. So if we pay attention to what it shifted, we have to be comfortable with the scale. So from here to here, it's 2 pi. Halfway in between is pi. Halfway in between that is pi divided by 2. So it looked like the black graph shifted pi over 2 to the left to reach that red graph, which I believe is part of question C. So in part 2, there was a pi over 2 shift left. Okay, now let's look at the next graph. 
So it's going to start to look a little bit crowded, but we'll try and color code it so it makes sense. So sine x minus pi, and the blue one compared to the red one, it looked like, well, this max moved all the way over here. So this was pi over 2 plus pi over 2. So it looks like it was, well, pi units to the left. Or we could think pi units to the right. So in this case, since it's the same, it doesn't really matter how we describe it or talk about it. So now to graph it. Okay, so everything moves pi over 2 to the left. So this x-intercepts moves pi over 2 to the, or sorry, pi units to the left. Or you could think to the right. This one moves here. Um, this one moves here. Sorry. No, it... Yes, it does. Um, this one moves here. And we'll have one that's here. Kind of disappearing. There we go. And now all the maxes move pi to the left. Or you can think pi to the right. The minimums moved pi to the left and pi to the left or pi to the right, and it's not going to matter. So this one looks something like this, and we'll label this one y equals sine x minus pi. So now in part three, we moved pi radians left or it could have been right and it would have been the same the same horizontal phase shift now if you guys had a hard time figuring out that phase shift again lucky for us we don't actually have to figure out the magnitude of that phase shift we have to just be able to identify if one has occurred or not so we have to be able to see if our graph was moved to the left or the right as indicated earlier the graph of a sinusoidal function has a phase shift from the graph of y equals sine x if the graph of y equals sine x has moved to the left or the right. So a sine function has a phase shift if it has been moved to the left or the right. A phase shift will occur if the equation of the sinusoidal function expressed in the form y equals a times sine bx plus c plus d has a non-zero value for c. As indicated earlier, you will not be required to determine the size, so the magnitude, right, that was like pi over 2 to the left in part 2, and that was like pi radians to the left or right in part 3, so you don't have to worry about the size or the direction of the phase shift, only to recognize from an equation or from a graph that a phase shift has occurred. Which certainly makes our life a little bit easier.